getting it dialed in. So I listened back to what we did the other day. The noise, it comes from the computers. But it, that's not too bad. You know, it's, like I said, it's good enough. When I consider it, we're talking about a message, there's a, let's see, priority. So it's nice to have a nice, um, you know, have it all be perfect, but that's not our goal here. As long as it's good enough. <laughs> Sometimes that's, that's way better than stalling. So, uh, Dominic, how do I say your last name, Orbeck? Yeah, it's Orbeck, but so just imagine if this H wasn't there, how it would sound. I think what helped guide us is what we're both talking about here in just an outline form is a story of witness, which builds belief, um, testimony, a moral obligation to offer guidance to others, and um, you know from there and the message and what goes behind that um, to make an action statement for uh, to guide people towards their own uh, empowerment and uh, potential. Right. And, and so let me just segue that into the, to what to the, what I wrote about just before our call. I mean, I'm I'm heartbrain media, and so with all these things that I work with. At some level, I work with a lot of different types of labeling. You know, I'll, I'll label data, um, what, how some people refer to some experiences or some things, other people will give other labels to. It doesn't change the core experience, but human nature gives it different labels. So you never have uniformity of the labeling. You have, uh, it's more like the, the experience. And I, I also deal in marketing and technology, I deal with system taxonomies, you know, complex definition schemes, systems of organization. Um, I, I deal with perception and decisions, which is about human willpower uh, and decision making and, and reality, which ultimately deals with a human being's soul and ego, which comprehensively is the personality. So you deal with messaging, which in large part is about propaganda, style, rhetoric, you know, heroes, rituals, and myths, how, how, to, how to deal with culture, measure culture, or engineer culture. Um, and so as a politics major in school, I looked at, the, you know, I grew up as a Cold War kid, and I, I was interested in politics from that, from that perspective, and I studied the new threats, after, because I was in college right during the Berlin Wall, having fallen down, and it was, what do we do with the peace now? So what were the new threats? And I got into exopolitics, aliens, alien abductions, whatever. Um, that was kind of an interesting thing for me with UFOs. So I graduate and I get into metaphysics, philosophy, science. Um, I have a kid and a step family. And within six months after that, 9-11 happened. And, uh, and so at the same time, I'm reading, I'm reading the Urantia book and looking at alternative deep history like Graham Hancock. Um, and looking at antediluvian human history, uh, which goes into, starts going into, you know, socializing a lot in forums with people and delving into conspiracy and politics with this whole 9 11 thing, invading Iraq. Should we go? Should we not go? Um, being introduced to topics like mind control because of things like channeling, which start to, to pop in at a tremendous rate you know, during this time as well. Um, delving into a, a, a apocrypha, um, watching the world around me on a political level, mind you, I'm a politics major, seeing what I learned in college fundamentally deconstructed or deregulated at a systematic or cronyism level. And now we're dealing with economic systemic collapse, stuff like this. We're dealing with a lot of systemic collapse um, you know, just fraud in your face, blatant propaganda of news, all sorts of conflicts of interest. Um, so uh, you've established that uh, you're um, not a wild, crazy person. You, you know that uh, you have a background and um, you're knowledgeable about things based on our system of doing things, which is normal school and, you know, normal institutional things. And you've made these discoveries on, on that level. Yeah, I mean, I've earned, I've earned this. I mean, you do have to ask yourself in the face, do I have something new to say? Or 
or am I just wanting the limelight? You know, is this what I'm going to offer something innovative? And, and if no one else speaks up, who is going to speak up? Uh, on that respect, too. So, yeah, of course I'm confident. <laughs> well, I think that's important, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was reading something actually on Daniel's uh, YouTube thing where somebody says, geez, they give anybody uh, a degree these days, a, a doctorate. Not the opposite, which is, wow, this guy has a doctorate. I should really be paying attention. <laughs> well, correct. I mean, Daniel's left himself open to that. He really doesn't care how he how he gets flamed. A lot of people who delved in, into um, trying to accreditize things like metaphysics or things that would be labeled, like going back to labels, things that would be labeled as metaphysics, Frankly, he, he determined that no one takes anybody seriously unless they have something like a doctorate. So people call, I think that's the technical call out um, whenever he gets sock puppeted and harassed for what he does. Uh, people do like to call that out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What you're really talking about is um, a studied understanding, this metaphysical side of things. Yeah, so on a branding level, there's those are there's always alternative labels you you can put. And I'm really good at interpreting underlying spiritual truth within a, expressed in a variety of labels through human communication. So I have a so coming from marketing, I have a tolerance and a, and a knowledge of what's appropriate magnitude of errors. What's what's a you know what's a what's a success based on the numbers versus what's not a success. You, you work in, um, you, do, you delve in workspaces where 3% response is sometimes highly successful, considered highly successful, whereas in other endeavors that might be considered total failure with those types of success rates or um, you know, determining the market or if, if someone is just way off on their messaging or something and making wrong assumptions and stuff like that. It's, it's just a, so with the politics background and, and really a liberal arts education from cradle to grave, like my parents put me through private schools. So I was had, I was, it was just kind of like, yeah, bred into me whether I was a good student or not. That's the kind of environment I was a slacker in. Still, it, it makes a difference. <laughs> for, our, for, for our context, can you explain, um, okay, so we're going to use the term metaphysical? Yeah, metaphysical defined as almost an inherent human attempt to bridge um, spirit and matter. It's technically metaphysics. What I was trying to get at with, okay, was using a term. That's one of the things that's been most confusing to me getting into things. And what I've found out is often it's just different terms for the same thing which is really what you're talking about and when you talk about metaphysical there's things that go under it and there's things that are called you know like intuition it's called intuition but really that's something that would fall under metaphysical and what i'm looking to do is put some things under there just to help the listener understand yeah. what we're talking about yeah, because you need that you need that kind of context to even launch into something advanced as what I talked about in that email. I mean, it, you don't it doesn't you don't have to have the context. I can reverse engineer from that. I mean, the really positive message there when I say positive and assertive is the good news is there's no such thing as a sacrificial religion. It's between you and your maker, and that maker's. Uh, a core of your of your co-creative personality, and all these other personalities in the universe, like a universe sovereign, but with Michael and Jesus, which delves into things like Christhood and people's organized beliefs and religions, on, and their labels on how they have their own religious experiences. But I mean, what I wrote there is Michael's religion and that's if ultimately someone corners me and, and says who who do you work for <laughs> in your personal religion in your life who's driving 
you know, who's your sovereign? Who's your Lord? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's Michael. It's the father. It's the mother. And so the labels that I hear from some people in, say, um, other movements that don't have the same system taxonomy as me and don't view, you know, my, what I view as my Lord and my, my father and mother, they might give different labels to in, in my perception because of the, the truth of their testimony and their, their witness to truth, beauty, and goodness. And so even though they're slapping what I might consider Luciferian labels on something, because that's the way they understand the world, or their metaphysical religion, you know, I, I can work with those people. I can, I can feel a, kin, a spiritual kinship. And system, systemic and institutional stuff, on the other hand, should be called out. It's in our, it's our citizen duty, both as uh, country citizens and spiritual citizens. And it's just the human nature to understand the truth. And if some of this truth has been hidden from us, if it's a real political event that the Lucifer Rebellion happened, then what's the, you know, I'm, look, I'm starting to explore the evidence that, that's out there to uh, justify that. You know, it's not just a, apparently it's not just a revelation. It's apparently pretty ubiquitous. And ubiquitous with that is, is the predication that religion is a sacrifice. Do you see how it's getting back into that? Uh, help so help me understand. Religion is a sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, so something like a zeitgeist that says you're under the control of a religion of control that's, that's built on the myth of, of a Jesus Christ son god or savior, savior god but it's just a religion of control. And don't you want to shake off this control and follow the New Age movement or something? I mean, there's, there's what I mean about the, about the, in that email, going back to that email, referencing the taxonomy of Christ Michael has about, you know, 0, 0, 0.01 market share. <laughs> So that's why I go back to like, well, who, who's gonna, who's all out there, even talking about different ways of looking at these things? You can't do it in your own church because you get excommunicated. And I see those testimonies and experiences happening to all sorts of, say, your ancient book readers who, who introduce these combination of enlightened religion and a, and a beautiful religion and and, um, and get raked over the coals because they don't believe in the same labels and system taxonomy anymore. 